Alligator gar is the second largest freshwater fish in America next to the sturgeon. They are absolutely prehistoric dinosaurs. They can get up to eight feet long and weigh up to 300 pounds. They are extremely fun to catch, but extremely challenging to catch. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything I know about alligator gar fishing and a couple quick tips. Tip number one today is gonna to be bait. So one of the number one questions I get asked about alligator gar fishing is what bait to use. I like common carp. I also like to use shad. I like to use mullet, tilapia in a pinch, buffalo, freshwater drum, Gasper goo also works really well. Anything that's local to the waters you're fishing in, that's gonna be a good fish to use as bait. You either need to have a cast net to catch those fish or you need to learn how to fish for them. So I brought my pack bait. I got a carp line going out so I can catch some more fresh bait, maybe a carp, maybe a buffalo out in these waters. So that's tip number one, get you some good fresh bait. Next tip to get you started on gar fishing is the, is the rod and the reel. You are gonna want a reel that has at least like 15 to 20 pounds of drag resistance. This is a pen spin fish or six, but you wanna get a reel that has a lot of drag resistance and you wanna get 100 to 150 pound braided line. Okay, these gar will snap a 100 pound line like that when they're big enough. If you get them in their teeth, when you hook set a gar, it puts a lot of pressure on that line. It'll absolutely snap lighter line. It doesn't have any flex for when you set the hook so you get a good hook set. And two, you'll get a lot more braid on the reel than you will with mono, okay? Braid is thinner, so you'll get more on there. A gar can easily strip out hundreds and hundreds of yards of line. So if you have mono, you're gonna have less line on there for him to, to pull out. So you wanna get braid for the capacity reason. So for your rod, you wanna get something that is a medium to medium heavy. You see that it can hold 50 pound line. It's rated at six ounce weights. This is a medium. You really wanna get like a medium heavy. So when you hook set, you don't have a whole lot of bend in that rod and you'll get that hook through that gar's mouth. So get a quality reel and get a quality rod. Personally, I would spend more money on the reel than the rod if I was gonna upgrade one of the two. Um, I've caught plenty of gar on cheap rods that are still medium heavies. Eventually they're gonna break and wear out, but I feel that a good quality reel is more important than a good quality rod, but they are both important. All right, y'all, next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna get some super strong leader. I'm using 250 pound steel cable. So this is seven strand, which means there's seven individual wires wrapped around each other to make a cable. I know a lot of other people use like 300 pound braid without the wire. When you use wire, you have to use crimp. So the 300 pound braid reduces the amount of work you have to do to get the leader on. Now steel cable is never gonna break on a rock or a tree branch. 300 pound braid, it's gonna be harder, but it is possible. So you have that. The other option is to use single strand wire, which you have to use a haywire twist to tie that onto your hook into your leader line. It absolutely works. It's available everywhere. Get the strongest stuff you can get. The thing with the single strand wire is it kinks very, very easily. And basically after every gar, you gotta throw it out and re-rig it. All right, now gar hooks is a widely, widely debated topic uh, for, for good reason, honestly, for good reason. So. The old train of thought is to use a big treble hook and you let that gar run and run and run until they swallow that hook and then you set it, right? So now you got a treble hook down in that gar's gut and you're obviously gonna catch it. And if you're catching gar to eat, whatever, go for it, right? Cause that's gonna give you the best chance of catching your dinner. If you're catching gar for sport, leaving a giant treble hook in its gut is probably gonna kill it. I would think, I mean, I wouldn't want a giant hook left in my gut. A lot of other people use big J hooks, you know, somewhere between an eight and 10 size. I've seen some guys use up to 12s. I guess it depends on how big of a gar you're going after. The newest trend are these tiny, tiny hooks, which you thread your bait onto. And I've been testing this out and it absolutely works. So the one thing I will say about gar hooks and why it's such a wildly debated topic is because of you're either catching them for sport where you want to release them or you're catching them for dinner. If you're catching them for sport, you really don't want to have a fish hook in the gut of the fish, right? I mean, cause you plan to release it. So the logic behind the small hook is if that happens, it's a smaller hook to be left in that gar's gut. It makes sense. In my personal experience, the only way to really make sure that you don't leave a hook in that gar's gut is to not let them run forever. And it makes a lot of sense, y'all. When they pick up that bait and they start running, the bait is in their mouth. They haven't swallowed it, generally. Generally, they haven't swallowed it yet. And a lot of guys will let that fish run and run and run and stop and chew it and swallow it and run again. The only surefire way I've seen to not let that hook get down in that gar's gut is to set the hook extremely early and you will lose more fish. And you will lose more fish. And you will lose more fish. I'm not gonna really voice my opinion too much about the whole hook debate. Big ones, small ones, treble ones, they all serve a different purpose. Use the one that fits your fishing purpose, run with it. All right, y'all, so find whatever hook works for you. Today I'm using a small hook and a big hook. And 
Go get it out there, y'all. Yeah, this one. This one's moving. Yep, there he goes. Three, two. He's not far from the bank. He's not far from the bank now. Just slowly bringing him back. Slowly bringing him back. Look at this, y'all. He has another hook in his mouth. This is my hook right there with the bait on it and this this is someone else's hook that was probably part of a jug line okay we've cut the line see that that's a rope this guy doesn't want to open there we go second hook out of this guy all right y'all this will be good eating size i am thinking about doing a catch and cook let me know in the comments if you want to see me do a catch and cook of these gar. Absolute dinosaurs. We did get a second hook out of this gar's mouth, so that is absolutely a victory. This guy's probably weighing in right at 40, 45 pounds. Let's get some photos, baby. Let's go. Here I've decided against the catch and cook for the main reason. I don't want to drag an extra 45 pounds up that hill, y'all. So we're going to absolutely let this beautiful, beautiful dinosaur go. All right, y'all, here's another good tip. That one was running, got snagged up, and broke off. So be prepared to spend a lot of money on hooks and leaders if you're fishing in these rivers. That'll bring me up to one of my other tips. Where do you find alligator gar? Alligator gar can be found all over, the, all over Texas and Louisiana. I think in the Mississippi, maybe even in the South America. I'm not 100% sure on that, but they're generally in big river systems. They're in small creeks, they're in bayous. They are basically anywhere freshwater fish can be found, they are in there, all right? They are dinosaurs, they've been living forever. They are all over these big rivers. Here we go, Here we go. three. That was a good hook set, y'all. I think that was a good one. <laughs> there he goes. Woo! He's feisty. Let's go ahead and get him up here. Interesting, he was spitting out a lot of blood. I got him hooked, right? I mean, that's not even through his mouth. Let me get my lasso just for safety. So here you go guys. Another tip. Get you a good solid lasso. It helps so much. These little ones are so feisty y'all. So feisty. But get you a good lasso. It'll make life easier. So I got him hooked. I got him hooked right here in the corner of the mouth. He is spitting up a lot of blood. I'm wondering if he's got another hook in him. That is way too much blood for the hook set I just had. I don't know. I hooked him right in the jaw, so that's a weird one. We're going to go ahead and cut this guy loose. So like I was saying, get you a good lasso. That's going to make it so much easier. So much easier to handle these fish. Go ahead and send him on his merry way. Here we go. He's off. So, get you a good lasso, y'all. Something that's stiff, something that can handle those fish. Get it behind their fins, not in their gills. To get it in their gills, you can damage them. So get you a good lasso, y'all. All right, 
I got, we talked about the bait, we talked about the location, we talked about rods, we talked about reels, and we talked about the lasso. So one other thing to talk about is when to fish for alligator gar. Typically they are active in the summer, in the dead heat of summer when it is super, super hot. A lot of guys say the big ones are more active at night. It might be true, I don't know. I don't really do a whole lot of night fishing because nighttime videos suck and I don't want to make them. Gar is one of the only species where I can honestly tell you they bite all day. I can't even tell you how many I've caught between the hours of one and three in the afternoon, which is normally a terrible time to go fishing for any species. Gar are still active in the middle of the day in the middle of the heat, they really are. So you can actually fish for them all day long. So there's another little tip about when to fish for gar. One little bit of information I'll tell y'all which has been my experience with alligator gar fishing is when you're out here on these rivers and these remote spots and you run across people that live out here and you know someone you would call a local they will typically hate alligator gar they typically hate them so a lot of those people fish for catfish and they're trying to catch their dinner and the alligator gar keeps stealing their bait and they don't like to eat alligator gar they don't want to clean alligator gar they want to catch catfish you catch a monster they like to see it but other than that they generally do not like the gar just keep that in mind while you're out here and while you're talking to people they might not like what you're fishing for because they're tired of gar stealing their catfish bait just an fyi for y'all all right y'all the morning bite has absolutely nosedived now it's a waiting game y'all now you just sit out here and you cook in the sun and like I said, they'll bite all day, so you just gotta be patient and stick with it. I got one other super, super important tip, is when you get out here and you cast that line out, you wanna check the drag on your reel. When you set on an alligator gar, you are gonna set very hard, maybe even two or three times you wanna set. So you wanna make sure your drag is tight. So generally, I will crank it all the way tight, and then I'll back it off about four turns. And it's gonna depend on your reel. You don't want to set and then it's pulling drag out. You don't want that. So always double check your drag, y'all. Right. There you go, guys, another tip. You will not catch every single one that takes off running. You just won't. Sometimes they're not even gar, sometimes they're turtles. See how chewed up that is? I'm guessing a turtle or small fish was picking on that. But yeah, you are not gonna catch every run that takes off, guys. I've had days out here where I get five runs, I catch five fish. I've had days out here where I get 15 runs and I catch zero fish. It's it's just gar fishing, y'all. Sometimes they just latch down on that hook and you're good to go. Sometimes it's just turtles all day long. Just soft shell and alligator snapping turtles all day long. So just be prepared. You ain't gonna catch every one that takes off running. Here. We're running very slowly. I mean, very slowly. There he goes. Three, two. That's fish on. I'm always so nervous fishing for these because at any stage right now, they can spit that hook. They can go airborne and spit the hook. They can just let it go. I've absolutely pulled up alligator gar that didn't even have the hook penetrating them. It was just in their mouth and they never let go of the bait. Just like that, y'all. Just like that. Oh, that's heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. Look, probably never, probably, probably never even had that hook in his mouth. Well, that absolutely sucked. That felt like a really good fish. I was literally just saying, at any point they could spit that hook. And he spit it, y'all. And that's gar fishing. That happens so often. I've literally pulled a gar up to the bank and never even had the hook penetrated. I got the lasso on him, landing him and everything. He just never let go of the bait. At any stage in gar fishing, they can spit that hook, man. It just, whew, gets your adrenaline going though. All right, I'm gonna get baited back up. Let's go. Let me talk about the setups here. So there's different ways to do it. Some people will put a bobber stop up on their line about 15 feet up and they'll put a float here and they use the float as suspension and as an indicator 
of where their bar or of where their bait is in the water. Then you go to your leader to your hook. If you got current in the water, you can put a weight right here and use it like a Carolina rig, like you're catfishing. Otherwise, you just free line them out here, your main line to your leader, and cast it to the moon. All right, y'all. Three, two, one. Good fish, good fish, y'all. Good fish. He's only like 20 feet off the bank right now. I gave this one a much harder hook set. Getting the lasso. There we go. That, that's a fat one, y'all. That is a fat one. See how these wires wrapped around those teeth? That's why I prefer the steel wires. All right, let me get my pliers. Let's see where that hook went. Ooh. Right there, corner corner of the mouth, corner of the mouth. The main trick I have found with getting the corner of the mouth is to set early while they're running, which is the best practice for catch and release. There we go. Hook out. Hook out, y'all. 66 inches. So about five foot five, about five foot five. And here we go, about 27 and a half inch girth. All right, so put it in the bag and we're gonna weigh it. There we go. There we go. There's a gar. There we go, baby. Mission today. Show y'all how to get it done. Getting it done, baby. Love fighting these guys. So challenging, so hard to get. And here we go. Mad respect for these dinosaurs out here, baby. Mad respect. Oh, what a beast. What a beast. So, we're gonna snap some photos. We're gonna cut her loose. All right, y'all, there we go. Alligator garfish in. I hope I taught you something. If I did, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. Think about subscribing. I'm gonna leave a playlist up here of all my gar fishing videos. I'm gonna leave another video link up here that's Garfishing 101. It covers everything about gar fishing in way more detail. And I uh, hope you learned something. If you did, hit that like button. Tell your friends and family. Tell your mom about it. All right, y'all. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace. And come on, y'all. If you don't, if you don't drive home from gar fishing absolutely covered in mud, I mean, like, did you really go gar fishing? Did you? You know the answer in your heart. <laughs>